Testing, 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 one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. A card in Germany this weekend features rising prospect Zahn Kosobutsky, as well as Senet Gashi and another prospect, Jose Ladaway. So I'll cover off uh, Kosobutsky first because he's one of the most intriguing under the radar prospects in the heavyweight division right now he's been gaining a little bit of profile in recent times but largely unknown to a wider audience outside of europe so this card is a universum box promotion card which will be broadcast on build plus and as the promo poster says it will also be on fight tv although at the time of recording i couldn't find evidence of that but hoping it is because that makes it much easier for me to catch that fight or that card i should say in Zahn Kosovutsky, he is going to be facing Joey Deveco. And as we know, Deveco is tough as teak. His record is 21, 8, and 4. But I think at this point for Zahn Kosovutsky, who currently has a record of 15 and 0, rounds are important. And a guy like Joey Deveco, who's been willing to travel, give guys rounds, you know, it's going to be invaluable for Kosobutsky because, you know, getting guys who can actually stand up to his punches because he's a um, southpaw who is a big puncher, moves well, good skills, but often you can't get the sort of tests and challenges at this point that are meaningful. So he's sort of in that in-between period of sort of moving out of that prospect phase and he needs, you know, rounds before those big tests and opportunities come his way. Because at the moment, he kind of has been in the past couple of years a little bit in limbo in terms of trying to get that opposition. Uh, two fights ago, he fought Camille Sko uh, Sokolowski, looked very good in that one, sort of was on cruise control for the most part, stopped him late on. His last fight was against Onorime Ihurami, a big puncher, stopped him in four rounds. That was uh, back at the start of this year in February. Uh, Ihurami was a very big puncher, but um, Zan Kosobutsky took care of him hand Handily enough. And now against Joey DeVeco, who's been in with a lot of different heavyweights over the years, you can think Bryant Jennings, he's one that he's faced. Uh, Sergey Kuzman, arguably DeVeco won that fight against Kuzman. So we know his level, where he's been fighting at. Often his size um, is one of those sort of factors that doesn't sort of help him in fights. And the bigger, taller man that he faces can often outbox him. And I think that will be the case here because I, I think this one probably goes to points. But it wouldn't shock me if DeVeco will stop late on, but I'm not necessarily expecting that. I think this is an opponent that they've pulled in because they want Zion Kosobutsky to go in there and get some rounds and look good in the process. And I think because um, DeVeco is a bit static, he will sort of plod forward. Uh, Zion Kosobutsky is going to pretty much have it mostly his own way, but it's not without any risk. DeVeco can punch a bit. So I think it is a case that we're going to see Zion Kosobutsky get uh, 12 rounds under his belt here because he does hold a WBA regional title, the Intercontinental Belt. Uh, or sorry, international heavyweight title. So he should be able to um, get a decision here. So in terms of the rest of the card, you've got Senad Gashi, who was added a couple of weeks ago, although still yet to have an opponent, and he's not even with a TBA on box rec, but he was added to the card via social media, and you can see he is in the promo poster. I think this one here is more so about having a little bit of name recognition, because Senad Gashi is actually probably more well-known than people realize in Germany, and his social media following, even just say for Instagram for example 1 million followers so he is a bit of a name he brings a bit of um, that value to the card but I wouldn't be expecting much he's actually coming off a loss to Hussein Mohammed last time out um, another prospect and gosh he was thoroughly beaten in that one but I am quite interested for that third fight on the card between the Cuban Jose Ladue he's a six foot four and a half Cuban he's currently five and oh 
I've been hearing a bit about him for a while now, but he hasn't been very active. Uh, and when he has been, sometimes the fights have been a bit obscure and you ha- I haven't been able to really catch them. So he'll be up against uh, Santander Salgado. This is um, a World Boxing Council Latino heavyweight title fight. So Santander Salgado in recent years has been fighting the likes of Tyron Spong, also Cassius Chaney, and getting knocked out in the process. So that kind of tells us all all we really need to know about um, where he's at. Uh, but for a 5 and a guy in Jose Lauderway, that's fine. I mean, it is what it is. The main event here is the one that I'm most interested in, which is Zan Kosobutsky. And for the last couple of years, he has been in my top 10 prospects in all of heavyweight boxing. And he has been a guy who um, had a bit of a breakout a couple of years ago, beat Argon uh, Skamichi. And that was the sort of fight that put him on the map because both of those guys were unbeaten heading into that one and Kosobutsky dominated. And since then, obviously, I listed off a couple of the different wins that he had. He controlled Camille Sokolowski handily enough, beat Honoriyame Ehurami, that was earlier this year, and now he's going to face a guy that most of us have seen fight before and many times, Joey Deveco, who we know is tough as teak, will go some rounds, and this will be one of those cases he can build some experience and um, keep his activity up because at this stage of his career, he wants to keep the momentum going. And if better fights in terms of higher up in the heavyweight division aren't available to you. you got to stay active. And when you stay active, you still want that to be a meaningful, you know, number of rounds that you can actually get as opposed to just some, you know, journeyman who's going to get blasted out of there in one round. And Joe DeVeco certainly is not that. So from that standpoint, this is actually a good fight for Kosobutsky for where he is right now. I'm hoping that we do see him step up to a higher level in his next ke- a couple of fights because he's clearly ready for it. But because of the log jam in the heavyweight division at the higher echelons, it'll be interesting to see where they can take him, how they can take him there, because it's not exactly always that easy to get the fights that you probably need and at the right time. You have to kind of, you know, maneuver as best you can until you can get in position. But he probably, if he is going down the WBA route with this uh, international heavyweight title that he owns, I mean, I guess there's what, five champions in the WBA, so something to aim, aim for, I guess. But looking forward to this card, so I do hope that, um, as the promo poster suggested, is going to be on Fight TV because that will make it much easier to view. But um, have you seen much of Kosobutsky and um, Jose Lardaway? Have you seen much or heard much about him? I'm looking forward to seeing both those fights. And Senegashi, clearly a bit of name value for the card. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.